Well, good morning, everyone. This is Shauna Wall here today for your uh, episode of the Plant Remedy Revolution. I'm really excited today. I have with me Dr. Vikram Shohan, and he is an amazing Ayurvedic doctor from India. I asked Dr. Shohan to be present on our interview series because he comes to us with a very well-rounded and deeply grounded uh, education in Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, his experience with herbs is, is unparalleled in the variety of, of ways that they can be applied to the body. We're, you know, one of the few Ayurvedic experts who has successfully treated thousands of patients, uh, whether they're suffering from inflammation to heart concerns to, you know, mental concerns. Uh, his, his breadth of knowledge is just astounding and his ability to really touch and heal and be present for his patients has given him quite a, a positive reputation. He's also the founder and CEO of the Krishna Herbal Company, as well as Planet Ayurveda. And so he researches these age-old uh, formulas from ancient Ayurvedic textbooks to restore health and save human beings from absolutely the worst side effects of the chemical-based treatments. And I know that that's why a lot of our of our listeners are, are listening to the show today because you're tired of the toxic side effects and you're tired of not feeling well. And Dr. Shohan is here today to explain how a foundation of Ayurvedic medicine, no matter what your condition, no matter what you're struggling with, can really provide a deep insight into your body's healing potential. So without further ado, welcome Dr. Shohan. Good morning. Or good evening for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Shona, for such a such elaborate in uh, in introduction. So <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm, I'm so thankful, and I'm so glad that I am uh, going to explain you this beautiful, this wonderful science of Ayurveda to all your listeners in America and elsewhere. So it's a uh, it's a pleasure for me to give you this uh, information mm-hmm. and. Uh, I am I am in different part of the world. It's a beautiful land, India, and uh, and uh, it has a treasure of knowledge that is called Ayurveda, and the whole world can uh, benefit from this knowledge because uh, not only it's old but it is also very effective and it is still sustained and continuous uh, continuously helping mankind. So it's a uh, wonderful, wonderful knowledge. Hmm, I, I couldn't agree more. And my understanding is that, you know, right, Ayurveda is incredibly effective, but it is, like yeah. you mentioned, it is an ancient uh, healing yeah. concept that has survived throughout time yeah. and is yeah. still used today. Yeah. So yeah. something's yeah. working. Yeah, it has survived the burnt of times, things which don't survive, things which don't have anything credible in them, they don't survive the burnt of time. They are lost in time. But mm-hmm. Ayurveda is so credible, so effective, and uh, so much useful that it has survived so many centuries and centuries and and still working and still going on. Ayurveda, if you look back in history, in Ayurvedic uh, ancient texts, it is mentioned that it is a, a manual of God. It is, in fact, um, when, when God created this uh, universe, he created this manual so that the product can last longer <laughs> he made this uh, universe and he wanted it to last longer and the humans and the animals and the plants he he guided whatever is needed to keep keep the things going so in this manual everything is mentioned how to how to live life how to uh, what to eat what how to behave mm. and how to um, keep oneself uh, healthy so this is a manual of healing. And you wrote a book about that. Is that is that right? Yeah, I wrote a book. Uh, the name is also God's Manual for Healing. So in that book, I have explained that uh, uh, this uh, this uh, machine made by the manufacturer, it, it can work for more than 100 years if you take care of it properly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it has a... Ayurveda, it has a comprehensive knowledge. It tells you about who you are, how you are connected with the universe, 
what is your body type what is your innate nature and uh, how the seasons they affect you how the how the sun affects you how the moon affects you and how the day and night affect you so everything we are actually uh, whatever you see in the macrocosm level that is there in the microcosm level so whatever mm -hmm. you, see, you see in the universe all the energies these five elements the earth water fire air and space they are all inside and they are causing the transformation they are causing the growth division of cells and the nutrition new cells new life is originating within us and uh, so everything is happening whatever you see outside so mm. it is very important to understand yeah. this no we are we are universes inside of ourselves aren't we <laughs> you really think about all yeah. of our trillions of cells you know traveling and that the macrocosm is is also yeah. you know the microcosm and what's going on in the body and that actually leads me to what i was hoping you would enlighten us with because it feels like when people present with certain health conditions right whether it is physical pain from inflammation or abnormal cell growth turning into cancer or, or depression right it seems like they're all just symptoms and there's an inherent imbalance in the body and you know if you can just speak into that how the ayurvedic medical system may lay a, a foundation for the support um, and if, if there's any commonalities between illness that aren't specific but that really are universal and can be treated using ayurvedic philosophy first Ayurveda explains that we are connected with the universe and uh, this universal energy is represented in our body as uh, uh, five elements earth water fire air and ether uh, space earth water fire air and space and uh, earth and water makes uh, uh, kapha or uh, or you can say this potential energy in the body kapha is made from earth and water and kapha is the potential energy of the body and pitta is the fire in the body fire element it is representing the fire and air and air and space is representing the air element of the body so these three energies air fire and earth uh, vata pitta and kapha vata is air and space pitta is uh, the fire and uh, kapha is earth and water so these three vata pitta kapha these are called three energies of the body or uh, you can understand as kinetic mm -hmm. energy thermal energy and potential energy in the body mm -hmm. so these three energies if they are in state of they are in balanced state then uh, the person is called healthy person if they are, they lose their balance they are in imbalanced state then the, there is disease mm -hmm. so everything our food affects the, the balance of these five elements our lifestyle the way, the timing of sleeping when we eat what we eat what we speak so it also matters how we speak how we behave with our family with our neighbors with the society so everything matters according to ayurveda it affects our health so it is not uh, only that you what you eat or what you uh, drink but also mm -hmm. your social uh, behavior your because so many people they are suffering from mental illnesses suffering from uh communication disorders and they suffer from depression they cannot cope up with the circumstances so social life is also very important for for health so so it's a very very elaborate science <laughs> ayurveda is very elaborate yeah well let's see maybe we can break it down for for people for example yeah. Um yeah. I don't know if this is totally true but I have heard that I'm probably a balance of pitta and vata. I think I have, I have a little your picture. I have oh, seen yeah. your picture and I and I think you are vata pitta. <laughs> okay. Okay. So according yeah. to I, that I have, heard, I have heard your voice also. So we analyze from voice from your frame and from your face everything. That's fascinating to me. So Paul how yeah. how would i ideally be you know treating my body and not only that right i'm very interested in 
you know, the communication and the social life. I've never even considered that before, but it, it rings very true. Uh, uh, Shona, you are a Vata Pitta person, if you ask me. Uh, mm-hmm. I have heard your voice and I have seen your face, uh, although we are speaking to each other for the first time. But I can tell you that your skin may be dry because Vata people, they are, their skin is dry, they have, they're prone to hair fall, their hair are dry, mainly split ends, and they're good in communication, good in talking, they love talking, and they, <laughs> they, have, they have a lot of energy, a lot of energy, a lot of enthusiasm, but lack of stamina. They want to do so many things at the same time, and they, 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 uh, out of 50 things, they, they do something, 5 or 10 things, but the rest of the things they leave, uh, in the middle, because uh, uh, energy is there, stamina is not there. So, Vata is, keeps them moving. They are more mobile. They are uh, walking and talking, and they are more creative also. They love uh, doing creative work. They are more uh, sensitive in nature. They, they, are, they are very emotional. They are very sensitive. And uh, this is uh, about Vata people. And Pitta people are also very passionate, very sensitive about whatever they do. Uh, they are target oriented and aim oriented. They, they, they are very intelligent people, the Pitta people. And, and their skin is usually, uh, uh hard to touch. Vata people, their, their, their body is cool to touch. And Pitta mm-hmm. people, uh, their body is hard to touch. So, uh, since you are Vata Pitta, sometimes it can vary, it can, uh, at different, uh, I mean, sometimes it may be hot, sometimes it may be cold. So you may, mm-hmm. since you are Vata person, you may not like very cold places, you will like, um, hot places like beach, you will like mm-hmm. more rather than, rather than snow, so because snow is very cold, so Vata mm-hmm. is also cold. So you so you are already Vata, so you won't like uh, snow, snowy areas or mountains. You like beach area where there is too much sun. Right. So Vata people, <laughs> and they have uh, Vata people. They have dry. I mean, sometimes the sound in crackling sound in the bones. Vata people, they have such uh, problems. Wow. And their appetite. I, I feel like you're giving me a psychic reading. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, do you agree with me? Oh, all of it, hundred percent. All of it is totally true, and I can't believe you know we've we've never met. We've spoken, yeah. and you've seen my picture, and it's it's incredible. So uh, this is just uh, uh, how we analyze the person, uh, prakriti, or what you call nature of the person, the physical nature of uh, of the person, and the mental nature. Also, we can analyze. And similarly, we can understand what kind of problems the person may suffer, physical problems like, uh, for example, Vata Pitta people, they usually suffer from from bone problems, from migraines, from headaches, from uh, uh, from uh, lower back pain, and, uh, cervical pain, and um, knee pains. The problem with the bones, problem with the uh, nervous disorders, and uh, mood swings, and irregularity in uh, in the females, there is uh, sometimes there is painful menstruation, irregular menstruation, and such kind of hormonal disorders. So such kind of uh, problems are there in Vata Pitta patients, mm-hmm. Vata Pitta persons. So mm-hmm. because of the uh, mobile nature of the of the air, so it's uh, and uh, we uh, treat the person as a we don't see the disease because one disease, there can be multiple diseases in a Vata person, multiple diseases in a Pitta person, and multiple diseases in Kapha person. For example, Kapha people, they are very much prone to, uh, Kapha people prone to high cholesterol, obesity, and diabetes, and, uh, uh blocked arteries. Pitta people, they are prone to gout, blood pressure, acidity, and heat in the body. Mm-hmm. Skin problems, or acids, so acne, and so we, their eyes are usually red. So we can diagnose the person from this, and the treatment is not so difficult. We ha- we know the herbs that this herb is cooling, this is heating. So we we and this is going to 
balance this uh, this element so we to balance the fire we give cooling herbs to balance the air we give heating herbs so this way we we maintain the balance there are some uh, dosha specific i mean uh, uh, nature specific uh, treatments we are uh-huh. treating the uh, disease from the root so whenever we are treating this dosha these uh, elements we are curing the person from inside out completely so that is a cure and when the, sometimes the the treatment is focused only on the disease that is disease specific so some pathies uh, they are focused only on uh, disease they are disease specific treatments sometimes um, uh, symptom specific uh, treatments are also there so symptom specific disease specific and curing from the root Mm-hmm. so these three kind of uh, treatments are there and everything can be done in ayurveda i am seeing around 50 patients in my clinic in india every single day and they are getting very good uh, results and they are complicated patients even i never thought when i started my practice that i will be getting such wonderful results mm-hmm. from all over the world patients are coming and there are diseases like uh, there is a disease uh, ulcerative colitis that is mm-hmm. uh, i'm getting very good response within within few days there is a remission and uh, the patient is free from symptoms within 15 days one month two months and there is uh, there are diseases like itp you may not have heard mostly patient may not have heard the such it is a not so common itp is uh, when the platelets uh, blood platelets they come down drastically mm-hmm. very low and in ayurveda i am amazed to see the results within 15 20 days one month i am seeing the disease is gone permanently that's incredible and it is that that disease is incurable in modern times and i see patients suffering and uh, itp i'm seeing wonderful results and i invite and i want all the uh, researchers to do some research to follow this to understand to to have an open eye to mm. uh, towards ayurveda and uh, look for the answers uh, of complicated diseases in in ayurveda using the ayurvedic herbs using the ayurvedic medicines so i'm yeah. getting very good results that's that's amazing and i i mean i'll certainly pass the the news along to yeah. some of my colleagues here i mean what i've been yeah. completely shocked to learn this year and i may have mentioned it on a different interview i i've done but when you take for example here in the united states we spend so much money on healthcare yeah. but we are some yeah. of the sickest people on earth when it comes to you know a, a country that has resources and yet we are not very living very long or very healthy and so how was to really uh, let uh, people know yeah Shana, the major reason I see is in America, I see the diet has become uh, uh, too different than it should be. We are basically mm-hmm. what I believe, what I uh, believe, what I see, and that we are basically animals which were created by nature. If you believe in God, you can say God. If you don't believe in God, then you can say nature at least. Mm-hmm. You cannot disagree. right so we are created somehow by by either by nature or by god i believe we are created by god in forests and for there were only forests when we were created uh, yeah, millions of years ago so we were living in the forest we were uh, living like animals what we learn from animals today nothing animals mm-hmm. they are enjoying their complete life span in the forest they are eating grasses they are not wearing the clothes they are taking vitamin d from the sun directly we are mm-hmm. taking vitamin d from the pills we are wearing so many clothes and we are not going out in the sun for 15 minutes one hour just to charge our batteries we are just eating uh, food which is not growing from the earth we are eating the food which is being made in the factory can you imagine mm-hmm. our fuel was which god gave us a fuel which grows in tree on trees which grows in the fields in natural food what we are eating for example the wheat grows in the field that is natural 
and the the animals they eat that grass what we do we are waiting for the the fruit then we take that wheat grain uh, into the into the uh, mill and then we mm -hmm. get the flour and we filter the then we strain the flour and then make it thinner and thinner and then we make it further thinner and then we make bread and then bread goes to the market then it takes another two days three days and then sometimes the flour is lying there in the packet for one month and then we bring it home and then we prepare the food and we keep it in the refrigerator it stays there for one more day it is dead food yeah. it is not living food it is already yeah. dead so yeah. how what do you expect from a dead food it will give you your cell a, a dead life i mean it, mm -hmm. it will, your your cell is not getting the live food the animals they are still eating the live food the food what they eat it is full of life the food which we are eating and and i'm talking about the wheat i have not talked about the the other things which are there in the packets for example uh, you see frozen food the the fried food can you imagine if anything can survive the 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 heat in the oil if you mm. put some some living thing in the burning oil in the boiling oil if you fry it anything living it will be dead so dead food is not going to give you life right. that is what is happening we are eating frozen food we are especially in america and europe and in, in canada the developed countries they are so they have changed their food habit so much we are drinking these uh, soft drinks soft drinks what they contain they contain carbon dioxide right so mm -hmm. we are we are spending money to buy carbon dioxide and take it in our body and spending our energy to get rid of it what we exhale we exhale carbon dioxide we, what we inhale we inhale oxygen mm -hmm. so what we need we need oxygen but mm -hmm. we are buying carbon dioxide and we are putting it in our refrigerators and we are drinking it every day so this is what most americans are doing and the carbon dioxide causing the the blood to become acidic and mm -hmm. more sugar the, so there is too much sugar in the soft drink too much uh, acidic media in the soft drink so people in america they they take stale food burgers and uh, pizzas which are and uh, soft drinks and alcohol so this has become our diet and that's why and we are looking for health in the pills that's not possible we just have to learn from animals they don't need doctors for anything mm -hmm. they are just relying on mother nature and they are living a full span i don't disagree with that the doctors are not bad that bad but at least we should have a how uh, guide the patient to live a healthy lifestyle our lifestyles have changed our eating habits have changed what is happening there is a mechanism in our human body uh, and also in the animals the when the light goes the natural light when the sun goes sun sets our 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 brain tells our body go to sleep there is melatonin that starts secreting from the brain it tells mm -hmm. our heart slow down it tells our respiratory system slow down it tells our digestive system slow down it's time to sleep it's time to sleep it starts preparing at the sunset when the light goes goes away similarly it works in the animals also the animals they sleep but the humans they are working and they are eating and they are mm -hmm. drinking and they are mm -hmm. dancing <laughs> right right <laughs> so they do after the digestive system is shut up and they they put the food and they are giving overburdening their system and it keeps working uh, for 5 year 10 years but after that after 40s after 45 people start getting heart disease they start mm -hmm. getting cholesterol they start getting blood pressure they start getting uric acid and hormonal imbalances and so many problems 
these are basic things and we should learn that we have to change our lifestyle we will have to change our eating habits otherwise we are getting trapped into these metabolic diseases like blood pressure diabetes uric acid lifestyle diseases yeah arthritis obesity so we have to learn how to breathe how to breathe how to eat how to sleep these are very basic things well and something that you said really struck me too about um how animals simply they're in the forest they're in nature all of the time and that's another thing that we have moved away from we're inside so much and we are in front of screens and we are not yeah, with uh, community we're not with other people so <laughs> yeah that really causes depression that causes so many yeah. social problems solution is at give at least one day to yourself one mm. day two day in a week one day you take a break at least sunday what happens on on friday people they just think we have a break tomorrow we have a weekend so they overload their system too much and they go out in the parties and enjoyment right. and 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 on the friday night they they eat everything and the sun, saturday sunday they don't they are still working they are not giving rest to, they are not out in the sun they are not uh, exercising they are not drinking enough water they are just sleeping because they are too much tired of weeks work so we everybody is running too much after money after work so i am not saying don't work but at least uh, maintain a discipline maintain a uh, cycle mm-hmm. don't ignore mm-hmm. nature don't ignore your life so otherwise you will have find uh, you will get some disease you don't have to run every day you don't have to go to gym every day and keep running over there on treadmill <laughs> that, is a, that is not going that is not a solution running on a treadmill is also not a, just have a walk go out in the sun just have a walk long walk can be half an hour one hour walk every day that is enough and live mm-hmm. happily live and uh, make some friends talk to people socialize a little bit eat li- eat less eat uh, uh, more natural some eat some leaves eat some salads eat some mm-hmm. fruits and eat more natural diet and sleep in time and ayurveda is there it, it, most of the ayurvedic chapters in ayurvedic ancient texts it is it is uh, the, those chapters they are focused on lifestyle and in that charak samhita the first 30 chapters are called fundamentals of living sutra sthana so those fundamentals of living in those 30 chapters he explained how to live when mm. to get up what to do that is how to follow your daily routine how to follow your seasonal routine mm. and these basic lifestyle things are mentioned in those initial chapters later on he explained the uses of herbs how to use various herbs how to use different different herbs of various uh, diseases even the complicated diseases uh, i am able to solve so many of them just because in ancient uh, books the, everything is mentioned we should read mm-hmm. those books and, right. and learn from them yeah, yeah. what um so do have do you feel you've captured a lot of this information in your own book ayurveda god's manual for healing yeah i have compiled i have captured so many so much information from everywhere and i have uh, uh, tried to explain in english because everything yeah. uh, in india is uh, mentioned in ancient language called sanskrit which is right. uh, nobody yeah in nobody is talking in sanskrit anymore right. and very few people, yeah so very few people know uh, how to uh, translate that language into english or into indian language hindi so from mm-hmm. sanskrit to hindi translation the process of writing a book on herbs also so i'll be coming up with a new book on different herbs excellent so travel to different yeah i have uh, i'm going to macedonia there is a small country in uh, eastern europe near greece mm-hmm. uh, land of uh, alexander the great you know. yeah alexander <laughs> So there is also planet ayurveda there i uh, have given a, 
you can say a franchisee and they are doing very good they are seeing mm. uh, doing a bunch of karma treatment there and, and uh, this uh, i'm seeing patients there also so i'm just going there to see them if i stay oh, here in india i'm working a lot but there i'm seeing only 20 patients a day so that is relaxing for me right they are going on vacation <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i'm on your um your one of your websites uh which is planetayurveda.com and i'm actually looking at miss carolina kitchveska yeah yeah carolina she yeah, she is there in macedonia and she is uh, uh, she learned a lot uh, ayurveda from me in the last 10 years she is working there carolina is the, carolina is there and her son is also there vasco he is also uh, learning a lot and mm-hmm. uh, i i named this as planet ayurveda around 70 18 years ago because i wanted ayurveda to be all over the planet mm mm-hmm. uh, so that's why i named it planet ayurveda yeah so uh, that is that was my plan that was what i was thinking and slowly slowly uh, then i started in uh, czech republic in slovakia in latvia in singapore in algeria tanzania in in usa i have a uh, somebody in boston also in california also somebody mm. and in canada also in vancouver so it slowly slowly it is uh, spreading so i'm yes, glad it to, is. <laughs> yeah i'm glad that people are uh, understanding that uh, ayurveda is there it is a, a really really an effective method uh, mm-hmm. yoga is also mentioned in ayurveda you know yoga was quite popular before ayurveda uh, mm-hmm. because uh, uh, ayurveda and yoga they are complementary is part and parcel as i I told you the importance of uh, air in our body yeah yeah uh, oxygen so we don't know how to breathe we are just buying carbon dioxide as i told you buying coca cola uh-huh. buying these uh, soft drinks to drink and then we just uh, buy carbon dioxide and we drink carbon dioxide but yoga is is uh, getting rid of uh, all those toxic matters through breathing mm that, that is a, uh, it is not complete yoga it is one part of that is called pranayam how to how to effectively learn breathing techniques that is yoga is eight part yoga means yoga is union union of our soul with with almighty with god mm. so to to unite that soul with almighty we need to be healthy we cannot be unhealthy and and do physical uh, do something we cannot meditate it was a way to keep ourselves healthy so that we can meditate for longer period of time that was the time that people used to meditate a lot so mm-hmm. so yoga is has eight branches and in those eight branches one of them is breathing techniques so and yoga itself is a branch of ayurveda ayurveda is so vast and yoga is one part this panchakarma is panchakarma is five five ways of five methods of purification of body the the massages various massages the shirodara or put, putting the oil on the forehead and there are uh, animas medicated oil animas are there mm. so so many this uh, techniques are there in ayurveda to maintain the health of the person uh, ayurveda is answer to even autoimmune disorders you see there are so many auto, autoimmune disorders in ayurveda has different concept and uh, we are seeing very good results in autoimmune disorders in kidney failure in liver failure in in blocked arteries in uric acid in uh, scleroderma in in lupus in psoriasis wow so, so many diseases yeah. complex complicated disease so it seems like you know the popularity of ayurveda is really skyrocketing just as the world needs it most and yes. yeah i'm so glad that you yes. touched on the yoga bit too because i feel like so many people you know once again it's very american you go to a yoga class and you work out right it's, it's like you know. americans uh, 
uh, people from out of India, they understand yoga as uh, just a physical exercise or aerobic exercise. It is right. just a part of uh, yoga. I told you the literal meaning of yoga is union. Mm. So you, unite. Yoga means mm-hmm. unite plus addition or ad, uh, adding something to your soul. That is mm-hmm. yoga. So, so uh, you, you are uniting your soul to the uh, Almighty. So you need to cross through the eightfold yoga methods. So it is called Ashtang Yoga, eight parts of yoga. And one part is aerobic exercise uh, or called asana. So yoga yoga has eight 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 parts. It is what what people are doing in America or Europe. It is just uh, asana, only the workout part. There are so many things, like there is prana, pranayama is breathing part. Mm-hmm. First of all, there is yama niyama. Yama niyama is, yama is uh, how you behave to to yourself. Niyama is how you behave to your surroundings, your societies. Yama niyama. Asana is this, uh, the workout part. Pranayama is the breathing part. Pratyahara is dissociate yourself. Alienate slowly, slowly all your desires and your uh, uh, too many thinking, thought process, compose yourself. And then dharna is focus on something Mm -hmm. so that you can uh, alienate yourself from this, dissociate yourself from this uh, material possessions. That Mm -hmm. is dharna. And then dhyana. Dhyana is to meditate. And samadhi is to to get lost in in the vastness of uh, the universe and get yourself connected with the with God. So mm-hmm. this is the process. This is yeah. process of union. Union. Yeah. <laughs> so it's uh, yoga is wonderful. Yeah. No. I mean, it's it's beautiful. I'm. I think all of our listeners are, are going to be very very intrigued here. And you know, as we start wrapping up the interview, I wonder, you know, if someone's listening and they are curious about embracing some of the tenets of Ayurveda, where would you suggest that they start? What's what's step one that they can just quickly, you know, take action on today? The first step will be learn from animals, number mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Their, sleep, their sleep time, their sleep pattern the eating time and the eating pattern. Whenever they are sick, they are not eating. And what they are eating, they, that should they should start learning from from uh, animals. I'm not talking about the animals in our houses, not the pets. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the animals in the forest. They are just eating the fresh. They are eating the raw. They are eating. They are not drinking milk. That is one more thing I wanted mm-hmm. to tell you. Okay. No animal is drinking anybody, any other species milk. The cow doesn't drink milk, the buffalo doesn't drink milk, and no animal drinks milk. Only the humans, they are drinking other animals' milk. So mm. that's, uh, that's another concern. In Ayurveda, it is mentioned. Ayurveda is a medical science, right? I, in Ayurveda, it is mentioned you can drink milk, but in, in particular, particular situations in so but we are everybody is drinking too much milk and also the milk products cheese and yogurt and ice creams and mm-hmm. so shakes so so much too much food we are consuming so milk is also causing so many problems mm-hmm. so so okay. uh, that's I, an easy yeah. step because there's a lot of alternatives yeah. nowadays too lot of, yeah 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 a lot of alternatives so this is what I would ask my listeners that they should uh, start uh, 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 sleeping in time and getting up in time and start getting out of their homes and being more in nature, touching the earth and going out in the sun mm. and uh, breathing fresh air, doing some pranayama, breathing exercise, earth, air, Fire, fire is sun, right? Mm-hmm. Water, drink more water. If you want to drink some, some, something exotic, then you drink coconut water. It is mm-hmm. bagged mineral water by God. Mm-hmm. Right? So right. if you want to drink, if you want to drink mineral mm-hmm. water, you drink coconut water. If you want mm-hmm. to drink normal water, you drink normal water. But drink water only. Don't drink anything else. It's 
is good for your health and uh, uh, you balance your fire by going out in the sun you balance your earth by touching the earth just take off your shoes take off your socks and just walk on the green grass you will feel very nice right absolutely absolutely i mean uh- I, I want to do that right now. I sent you a picture of my outside, so I think I won't do that today in my three feet of snow. Not, not out there in the snow. No doubt there in the snow, but whenever there is sun, whenever there is uh, nice weather, then you should Absolutely. do it. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah, right. My Vata would not would not like that. Yeah, yeah I'm learning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, this yeah. has been so enlightening, Dr. Shohan. I mean, absolutely enlightening. And you have a very gifted way of, of teaching that, that is just very commonsensical. And so I really, it really appreciate you sharing the It is very important to make something very, very simple. Mm-hmm. We, have made some, uh, we have made the science very complicated. It is yeah. uh, so difficult to learn and understand. It should be simple. I agree. I agree. And accessible to, to everyone, right? Like we do yeah. all have the power to, to heal and to take care of our and body. Have, and, and the second step, I want to tell uh, the second step also, learn yeah. something, uh, learn something, some basic things about your health, uh, some basic herbs which you can find in your kitchen. They, mm-hmm. they, are, they work very well. There is a herb called... Uh, Ginger, you know, nobody, mm-hmm. people, they don't use ginger. Ginger is very good for cough, cold, pains, body aches. It can heal so many problems. Use Absolutely. turmeric. It can heal so many. It can prevent cancers. It can prevent uh, pains. It is. Mm-hmm. It works really well. Turmeric is there. Ginger is there. Ginger and turmeric are certainly two of my favorite herbs. Thank you again, Dr. Vikram Shown. It's been incredibly educational.